All right, I'm alive. According to YouTube, I'm alive. It says you're alive. Um, I am on early, but I wanted to do a flip through of my fabric journal. So we're not going to start on the page until three o'clock. I've already pulled my stuff out of my binder. For anybody that's new, I've created a binder with 20 pockets in it. And what you do is anytime you finish a project and you have just a little bit of this and a little bit of that on your table still, you can um, throw it into one of your pockets. Yeah, I, I'm coming on early to share the journal. So at three o'clock, we can just get to it. But um, the, the binder, bits and bobs, whatever's left on your table, you just throw it into a random envelope. Um, I did have kind of a theme in each of my pockets, but now I'm just, whatever I randomly have, I'll throw it into a pocket because we don't always use everything. In fact, I've never used everything in a single pocket on one, one live. Um, and the main reason I've also come on a little early is there is a thunderstorm moving in. So I may or may not be able to get this finished today. So bear with me, everybody. Um, yeah, the binder, the only pocket that you have to kind of make sure you put stuff in that's similar is the fabric pocket, which is pocket five, which is what was chosen for this week by the random number picker last week. So we're doing pocket five. Um, and I know that some folks aren't going to be able to make it today because they have doctor's appointments and that kind of stuff. Never worry about missing me because you, there's always the replay. Okay, there's no, there's no concern about you have to be here to do these. Um, the replays are always there. I do come on early sometimes if the weather conditions are bad or if I want to talk before I get started on the actual project. So um, today is Wednesday, March 16th. So tomorrow, um, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. And I thought maybe we should be doing something St. Patrick's Day, but then I was like, eh, whatever. I might get the wild urge to come on at two o'clock tomorrow and do something for St. Patrick's Day. I don't know. Um, today is the last day to sign up for the postcard swap. That's something I wanted to share before we start talking about the fabric journal. I finished the all hand sewn postcard that I started the other day. I have posted pictures of this online already, but I figured I would um, share it here. But today is the last day to sign up for this swap. Um, we have had one person have to pull back and drop out because of, you know, family concerns. And that's understandable. And I'm fine with it since she dropped out before I had assigned partners. So if you are planning to participate on this, I hope you have your postcard ready to go because tomorrow I assign partners. And I would like for the postcards to be mailed out before the weekend. So let me show you. This was my, whoops. This was the one I did originally. And it's got some machine sewing on it. You can see the machine stitches and you can see my hand stitching. So Teresa challenged me to do one that was all hand stitched because not everybody has a sewing machine. If I, hi Pam. If I lived closer to Teresa, I would go over and see if I could help her. Her thread just keeps breaking on her sewing machine, and she's tried all sorts of things. I know Angie was having a problem with breaking thread, too, and she actually went and bought another machine, and the thread is still breaking. So uh, even on the new machine, the last I heard, and her old machine had a broken part on it is why it was breaking. Um, Sometimes you just need somebody else that sews to come by and just ha have you thread your machine in front of them because sometimes you just need another pair of eyes to see if you've missed something because my sister had trouble one time and I went over 
and she threaded it. And then um, I tried sewing with it. And then I realized she had not put it through her uptake. The On the older machines, you know, you have to hand put it through. Now you just put everything through a slot and the machine just kind of pulls it in. But she hadn't put it through her uptake. So sometimes that's all it takes. And um, some machine shops, you can take your machine in there and tell them what's going on. And then they'll be nice and look at your threading and see if it's just your threading and not charge you anything. But not everybody's nice. Some of them will say, okay, I'll look at it. And it'll take them a couple weeks and they will have just rethreaded it or whatever. So, so you got to find a shop you can work with. Anyhow, this was my original. Teresa challenged me to the all hand sewing. So this was all done by hand by me. So I stitched the background on last, um, when did we do that? A couple days ago. And then I've stitched everything on here. The windows are put on with cross stitches. So it looks like there's little cross stitches in the windows. And um, I did a chain stitch around this roof and added lace. The tree trunk is lace with a variety of stitches. The storm's fixing to get ugly. Um, and then when I sewed this little house on, I did a blanket stitch all the way around, but then I had to trim it. So there's like these orange little bits sticking up. I'm just leaving it. Now, when I stitched it to the card, I did put a little bit of fabric tack here in the center just to hold it still while I did the stitching. And I did one quick running stitch around the outside um, using a, a creamish colored thread and then I did the black thread and then I had stamped on the back of it. So it, even if we don't get another person to sign up so we have an even number, I have a way of still doing it with nine people participating. So no, no, no worries about that. If I don't have an even number, we can do one swap will be between three people but each person will send to somebody different. So everybody gets a different postcard in the end. So there we go. This was some by hand, some with machine. This was all by hand. So I'm looking forward to this swap. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So now we got 15 minutes to look through my fabric journal. Now this fabric journal was created by our friend Lisa, Lisa Conway. I have got to turn the autofocus off because it's, it's driving me crazy. All right, much better. So she created this with old sheets. She just ripped these. And I think she had dyed these with something too. And what I've been doing... Be, to make this more sturdy is I glue two pages together. So every page you see in here, hi Carol, every page you see in here, there are two pages stuck together and Lisa just sewed it together with some ribbon. So Lisa had sent this to me and then I had done this cover and then we started swapping pages. So some of the pages in here were completed by me and some of them were completed by some of y'all. So, and I, um, I don't stitch directly on the pages in here. I do it on felt. So you'll see felt behind all of the work on top because that's what that's actually sewn in. And then I use fabric tack and glue it to my book. All right. So that's the front cover. We'll see if how long I can stay on from the sound of the storm. It's fixing to get really bad. This was done in 2018. This was another page that I did. Lesson learned here. If you're going to have anything that goes beyond the edge of the page, put it on the outside so it's not getting crunched in the pages. All right. And these little tags have the date it was completed and then some information. Page completed with items sent to me by Barb Fillion in our stuffed altered bag swap in Aunt Bex Creations. So we did swaps for items. We've done swaps for whole pages, everything like that. But this was all stuff that Barb had sent me. 
and then I made a page. This page was sent to me by Janet Baum. And we did the swap in Lisa, my eclectic life's group. So that was a fun swap. This page was from Ruth Lamb in 2019. Page journal, fabric journal page swap for six inch patch for six inch patch. And so I just put that in there. And again, I glued them onto the sheets. This page was sent to me by Barb Fillion here. And then this one was Kathy Whitney made this page and sent it to me. And she had these cool metal um, quotes. Can you see that? And I got to thinking, you know, we could add metal bits to our pages. I have some metal things like butterflies and that kind of stuff. So you could actually turn your fabric journal into a mixed media journal just by adding other media. And that, that was like a duh moment for me. So anyway, <laughs> next page was by Beth. And she did felting, of course, Beth Schuler. Uh, April 18th, 2020. And she did this little page for me, all felted. Hi, Ann. And then this page created using items. Again, sent to me by Barb Fillion and Dawn Voss. I hadn't seen Dawn in here in a while. So this was a fun page. Um, Barb had sent me a bunch of old, like, remember, I guess back in the 50s and 60s when they would roll their hair, they'd put one of those scarves over the top and then tie it. All my aunts did that. They had wash your hair day, put it up in rollers and have the scarf on it until it dried. So that was a lot of fun. And then I had these, um, I think these were Brad's and I put thankful on there. And let's see, now we're to the place. This page I had started here and did the, uh, what's it called? Canta stitch, and I included laces and stuff, but this page is not finished. And for the base on it, I just used muslin. And you see, I just would put a piece down and do the canta back and forth, and then I would do some in the different direction. And these are all just scraps, just random scraps that I put on here. And this will eventually get glued in here. But this is our square for today. And I put a pin to tell me which is the top. So how is everybody doing? We have a storm moving in here. And it's going to get loud, I think. Um, what I do, what I found is because these were roughly torn pages, I actually measure my page. And so today's page is five and three quarters by six inches. At the beginning, I was able to do six by six, but the pages change in size as I go back through here. And I've actually glued three pages together now because I missed a page. So I just went ahead and glued that down. So there's three pages glued together. And you can see they're all different widths. So each page, this one I think has been glued to the next. Yeah. So you'll see there's a difference of size and everything. So what I did is I measured my page in my book. So this would need to be the five and three quarter inches wide to get it to fit and be able to close. And I could still do the six inches tall with a little bit extra hanging below it. So I measure my page and then shrink my page down so that it'll fit onto the page. Now, there's nothing wrong with things sticking out on the, the right or the left, depending on if you're working on this page or this page. Um, you just have to kind of pay, pay attention. But I'm going to put my Canta page here when I finish it. And then this page will go here. And I'm going to have some hanging below. 
But, you know, something you can do to kind of hide that is when we're doing this page, if we have some lace in there, I'll just put it on the bottom of the page and then it'll hang out from the bottom of the page. So measure your whatever you're putting yours in and make sure that it'll fit on your page for a page in your book. And you can see how it's kind of. As I'm filling it, some of the pages get shorter. So you see just hints of everything. So if you put lace on the edges, that could be really pretty too. This is all about scraps. This book is mostly made of scraps or things that I've swapped other people for. And, you know, the book is not, it's not evenly done because it was randomly torn by Lisa. So you just have to work with what you have. Um, I think it's going to be a really adorable, chunky book when it's done. And it's fun to look through. And you could take ideas from this for other projects. Like, say you wanted to do a lacy journal cover. You could look through here and something like this would be beautiful on a journal cover. Just make it in a bigger format. And swap with friends. And that'll help you fill your book up, too. And you get different ideas, different fabrics. And on Kathy's page, she's actually done some embroidery. The, the blue lines you see, that's embroidered lines. The yellow little crosses, she embroidered that. She's got some orange on here that she stitched. So it was very interesting to swap with others. Hi, Nashua. And for anybody that's new, I do have, you can watch, and but if you want to participate in the chat, I do ask that you subscribe. You will have to wait five minutes to be able to chat. So if you want to ask me something and are a new subscriber, just wait the five minutes, write your question down on a scrap paper, piece of paper, and then prepare to pop it in. And if you do, um, or do the at Aunt Bex Creations. So I'll see my name, my channel name in orange. And that way it's easier for me to see the questions just by glancing up. I do try to watch my chat as I'm going along. But sometimes you get in the zone and you just have to stay there for just a little bit. Sherry says she has a book like this also. So again, if you're going to work in a book that's kind of created like Lisa did with just torn sheets that are just random to size, measure your page to make sure the page you're creating will fit in your book. I do not try to work directly in the book, especially since it started getting so crunchy. It's so much easier to work on a piece of felt or you could use a piece of batting. Just use something for your base. Even a piece of muslin. Um, it's, it's no biggie. So I'm going to set that aside. We're still a little bit before three, but we can start looking through what, what I pulled out of my pocket five. So let's see. I've got a flower that Janet Nash sent me. I have several buttons in here. This was from Mary. Little stitched scissors. And I have some words that somebody sent me. I'm sorry I didn't write names and stuff in, on a tag or anything, but this is Poise. That's a old applique that's been in my stash forever. A little piece of, looks like tie-dyed fabric or inked fabric. I put the cat in here. This might need to be applied to a piece of fabric to make it work. So we might we might play with this just to see... I have Mod Podge that's for fabric. So maybe we could attach one of these cats. And I, Mary, I think you sent these to me. Um, we might try to attach napkin to fabric. So we'll have a little experiment. And here's some lace, like I said. I've got a little piece of yarn. Because this is bits and bobs from your table. There's another piece of pink fabric. I might put the fabric off to the side over here. And the postage stamps. A lot of this fabric was gifted to me. Some striped fabric. 
This is pretty here. One of y'all sent that to me too. This is a nice big piece. This I might actually pull back out of here and turn it into a project bag. That might get aside to be sewn into to a bag. And then we've got beautiful pieces. Some flowers. A little piece of blue. I think some of this was from Dawn Boss and Barb Filion and Ruth. Oh, this is fun. Look at that. It's it's trimmed where somebody was working on a quilt and squared their quilt up. That's neat. Oh, look, there's a bunny and some mushrooms hiding in here with this yellow. There's some more lace. That's actually tied into almost a belly band. There's another button. And some trim of flowers. There's a, another bow or not with some fabric. And then we've got somebody made a little fabric. Um, what do you, I guess it's a fabric cluster. And it's just tacked together. But it looks like it's got sari ribbon and lace. And there's some measuring tape um, ribbon. Ooh. I feel bad Scott's driving to work in this. Um, yeah, these are just beautiful little pieces. Look at that piece. Isn't that gorgeous? We're just going to keep going and see if I get knocked off. I'm just doing a flip through this. But this is a way we could do, we could do some scrap swaps and just make little packs like this and send them to each other. If anybody's interested, that could be a swap. Another little piece of funny uh, ribbon. These little piece of kitty cats. And then here's some more of the um, stamped on pieces. I'm thinking maybe, um, Anne, you sent those to me. The little words. I don't remember. I think you may have. Grace. And then this was from Janet Nash, where she sewed the little banner. That's like instant ready to use. And there's another little put together little bit that I can almost guarantee that was from Janet Nash. So things like that are just instant embellishments. We could do an embellishment swap for our fabric pockets. Um, she's so cute, but she's way too big for my my um my book and then this i think was from journey there's some more words so i have words i can add and then this was some of the rusted paper maybe journey or maybe janet uh, Baum. so let's see what do we want to do i am going to save this fabric for something larger and then i'll put the remnants of whatever i make Mary, go get something to eat. My goodness. All right. This is just so much fun right here. Let's see what we can put together with this strip. So here's our page. And I just start laying things on the page. And we might end up doing two pages because I do want to try applying the um, napkins to fabric. I love those kitty cats. All right, so let's see. This could be cute in the background. And I just try things out until I get them kind of how I'd like them. 
things I don't think I'm going to use, I'm going to set aside. So this could be the yellow sunshine. And we could put a piece of this floral fabric maybe on the bottom. So it looks like a garden. I want the flowers to be right side up. Oh, I like that. And then this could be on the side maybe. Alright. So now if you wanted to, you could sew this by hand to your felt, which I might if y'all can uh, bear with me while I hand stitch again today. I'm looking for a needle right now. so it's now three o'clock so anybody that's just getting here welcome we're working on our pocket five i'm just getting some thread ready where i can do a little stitching i did come on early because i don't know how long the weather is going to let me remain on. So we're just playing it by ear right now. So I'm thinking let's make this kind of a sunny thing. I might not even use that quilt bit as I'm sitting here. Other things are forming in my brain. But let's get kind of a sunny sunny sunshiny top and then the flowers on the bottom and i'm not going to use this entire piece so what i think i will do is i'm going to kind of like the torn look on the edge so we'll just line this up kind of close. And then I, over here, I'm just going to put a little snip. And then I'm going to rip this off like so. It doesn't matter if it hangs over the edge a little bit. But I didn't want so much of it. And then I'll just put my pin back in here. I might use some of this on that um, page. I already have a background on it. I might add some of this stuff to it. And then that way I can um, go ahead and get it installed in the book. And I always start on the back. Now, if you want to stitch over the entire thing, you can. I'll bring you closer. Or you can just do a running stitch around the edge. And since this is going to be glued into my book, I'm just going to kind of do the running stitch around the edge. Poor Bernadette. I'm going to have to find an umbrella so I can take her out in a little bit. And hopefully the lightning and stuff will calm down a little bit. Because the fence is gone. They came uh, Monday morning and cut the nails off at the uprights and just took the whole sections of fence and pulled the posts out and left. So... I don't know if that was such a wise decision for the young man next door, but it's what he wanted to do. 
I think as you get older, you learn more patience. You put the yellow on the bottom instead of on the top. Two days of watching me stitch on stuff. Y'all are brave. I got a little bit longer needle today, which is making this a little bit quicker. We'll see together here in a minute. I'm hoping the storm will let up enough that I can go down to Ace Hardware and get some suet cakes because the woodpeckers have been coming and I'm out of suet cakes. I don't know if I've got enough thread off to go all the way around this. Because you don't want to pull it too tight. You want it to be able to lay flat. What is it about rainy weather that people think if they just drive faster, they'll get out of the weather? That's how accidents happen. Slow down. All right, we'll flip it to the back. My mother-in-law is wearing a heart monitor right now for a week. They're trying to figure out why she fell. And uh, they're going to see if it's something to do with her heart. And we'll just snip that a little bit. All right. So now I know that that's the top. Now I'm going to take some of this. Here, I'm just going to rip it to width first. doesn't want to rip against its grain. There we go. I knew I'd get it to behave eventually. And if you want a frayed edge, you just get it. Find the one that's closest to the edge, pull it off, and then pull the next one off.
I'm just trying to get rid of all these long threads that are sticking up above. Greg had ordered groceries, but he had to go to work early. So they arrived, and he'd ordered fresh pineapple, and the girl hadn't made sure the lid was on good, and she'd thrown it in with his banquet meals that he wanted, and uh, uh, pineapple popped open and was loose in the bag. So I rinsed it and put it in a different container. All right. We can kind of stitch that on there, and that'll be the garden. Now, I was about to say, what did I do with that needle? I should do this with the needle when I'm not using it. All right. I'm going to get a cream thread, I think, because that's got a cream background. Or maybe this brownish-looking stuff will work. Okay. Hi, Barbara Clark. Our suet feeder is quite popular. Station in the yard. Yeah, we have a yellow-bellied sapsucker that likes to come to ours, and he's such a handsome bird. They're feeding hard today because the storm is moving through. We have quite the thunderstorm in the background. Yeah, I, one of y'all sent me this pretty fabric. Um, once it goes into my stash, it uh, it becomes one with it, and I, I lose track of who sent what, but I am very appreciative for everything. I'm doing a fabric journal page to go in this fabric journal, and at the beginning, I did a flip of all the pages in there, so if you want to just... While I'm busy working on this, you can always go back to the beginning and um, see what, what all the pages look like. For anybody that doesn't know that you can do that, you can go back to the beginning while I'm still live and watch the beginning. If you don't want to sit and watch me stitch. So I'm going to set this back out of my way just so I can not have too much right in front of me. And I'm just going to stitch this on around the edge, with again, with a running stitch, because I don't want to be here all day doing just running stitches. Finished watching the Andy Warhol Diaries last night. And boy, that hospital screwed up up there when he went to have that gallbladder surgery. That's why he died. I'm hoping the family got something out of that because that was not a necessary death if they'd been taking care of him properly. Just my opinion from what I saw. Every once in a while, you see me stick my finger in the loop of thread that's coming up. That's so it doesn't twist together and cause a knot. If I keep one side under control, then I don't lose and have it spin together like it's fixing to do there. There we go. I have some um, needle tatting stuff that I bought at Hobby Lobby on closeout. I just got to find it. It's probably back in the stuff 
in my overflow stash. Like Mary was talking about yesterday, I have my fabric in another room, my, my fabric stuff. And my quilt fabric is, it hangs out under my bed. My sister gave me a Joanne gift card. So I was, I didn't have a lot of white on whites in there. So when a pattern calls for, you know, a tone on tone white or something light, I don't have that much. I have mostly prints. So I got a yard of four different white tone on tones. And then I got two yards of two different fabrics to do a couple dresses for Project Dress a Girl. Um, I need to get going on those. I have them. I have two cut out for last month and a half. And I was going to jump right in and get started. So I wasn't trying to do it early. And here I sit with two cut out. None sewn together yet. Might work on that this evening. I'll just have to put a bunch of lights over there so I can see. It is so dark and gloomy today because of the storm moving through. Now, if you wanted to um, come in and cover all these running stitches with trims and that kind of thing, you can. You just have to do more stitching. Take it to the back, flip it over, tie knot. I know it was kind of weird that I'm using green felt, but it's what I had close. So is Mina here? Hi, Mina. I'm going to bury this in the in the felt. Not going through to the front. I'm just going inside the felt so the tail's not loose to catch on stuff. The whole thing's going to be glued down and you're not going to see any of the green anyway. And then I saw this could be a, a big flower or it could be a sunshine. We could just stitch Janet's little bit on there let's just let's just try some things on here just to see what it'll look like I need a pin cushion I use this one here And we've got these flowers. These could be fun. You, you can cut these apart and then just have some of them on here individually. Um, we could cut a kitty cat out and just have him sitting on here. That's an idea. Or we could do mushrooms and this bunny rabbit. Sorry. Oh, Pam, you're ahead of me. You've already got six done. Wow. For anybody that doesn't know Pam, she she's another person that sews. And um, there for a while, Pam was on this um, Baby Yoda or whatever. Uh, sewing phase. She had a bunch of baby Yodas in the works. I was enjoying those. Easter's coming up. Well, maybe we'll put a bunny on here instead of a kitty cat. Put a little rabbit on the page. And save the mushrooms for another page. Do we have anything that's green? Let's see. Do we have anything? This has got some green to it. Just trying to think of what I could do to make it look like grass down here. It's looking here. Let's 
see what we've got. Put that paint up there before I lose it. I don't think I have anything green. I guess I could do stitches. Get some green embroidery thread and just stitch him down. I'm doing little cuts up to the bunny's edge so I can tuck them under and hide this yellow bit. I don't know if this will work for me or not. And if um, anybody else that sews doesn't know about D and Dory and D son Nate, they, they do a video every Sunday morning. They just do one video a week. But it's so enjoyable just to see what the two sisters have sewn. And Nate, he pulls out the next challenge for them. They challenge each other. They have a challenge box. And um, they were asking for comments or suggestions and I said well why don't you do one where your your sister chooses what you make and they did that one they drew it one week and that was a lot of fun to see all right now this doesn't want to come off from here because it's magnetic if I do a single thread can I get this bunny sewn on with just the thread in here We'll, pack, we'll, we'll play. Um... Hi, Mike. I'm going to sew a little bunny on here, maybe, if I can get my fingers to work. Rainy weather, you know, and all. All right, let's see if I can just get the needle up through the thread, through the fabric first. Okay. We'll fold this over, I say. Wherever this bunny lands, that's where he's going to be. I might move this back off. I'm going to take small stitches. Probably should have real white thread. Ah! I unthreaded it. My old blind dog's behind me. We're stitching on a rainy day here. In the center of South Carolina. I was watching Roots and Refuge. Um, she's not too far from me uh, down Batesburg, Leesville area. And she's getting her new greenhouse put up. Um, if anybody's interested in gardening and homesteading, that kind of thing. I really enjoy her and her, and her husband and all the kids and all her critters. Um, I'm over large animal manure, so I will probably never have large animals in my life again. Grew up around dairy cows, pigs, horses, donkeys, all that kind of stuff. And I'm just over it now. <laughs> if I had somebody that would clean up after them and do all the maintenance and I could just look at them and say, oh, aren't you cute? I'd say, okay, but 
Animals are a lot of work for anybody that doesn't know. Large breed animals, especially. My sister-in-law has given her her horse to some little girls that they're just excited about having a horse. And I don't know. They're up, they're all under 12 years old, so I don't know how that's gonna work out. We'll see. We'll see how they do. They might take right to it, but horses, you gotta, there's a lot of maintenance to a horse. Daily maintenance. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just turning under the edge that has the yellow so that all that will be left, for the most part, along the top will be the bunny. See how I'm turning it under? Yep, exactly. Exactly. They're just, I, I enjoy the animals. I just, I'm, a, I'm now 58 years old and I'm kind of over caring for large animals. I love my dog and the cats, but oh, cats are the, the easiest because they compartmentalize everything. I just have to empty the boxes on a regular basis and put fresh stuff in for them. But dogs, you got to follow them around with a shovel or try to pick it up in a bag, which I think is ooh. All I can think of is if the, if the dog goes off the path where you're not supposed to be walking anyway and it's biodegradable crap, why should it matter <laughs> if it just stays there? But, oh well, that's just me. And I clean up after Bernadette when we're out in public. But And I try to clean up before we mow so Scott doesn't cuss about manure on his shoes. But he doesn't say manure. He says the other word. I'm hoping the kids he's got, he's training, start uh, paying attention. He says he's getting sick of having to go and hunt them down. Because they'll go find some corner. He's trying to train them on wiring stuff. And he has to go find them. Because they've gone and found some quiet little corner to get on their phone. And oh my goodness, he's just... I said, well, write them up. It's the way that, that's the only way they seem to understand is if you write them up. I'm kind of glad I came of age of, you know, back in the, in the 80s before the computers and the portable phones and all of that because these kids now, they just, you, wanna, you want me to put my phone in my locker? So I can like work while I'm at work. What? Well, that's just crazy talk. Different times. That's for sure. I mean, we used to go on road trips with no phone. You're watching on your phone. Hey, but it's okay when you're at home. <laughs> My son works for a meatpacking place. And they told this kid, not Greg, but this other kid, you need to clean that meat off that motor. And you know what that kid did? He took a bucket of water and threw it over that machine while it was running. My son said, you should have seen the ark. I said, you should have seen that guy being dead because, I mean, wow. Greg said it was a $25,000 motor. The kid just burned up, and all they did is send him home for four days. Greg's like, you sent him home for four days? He ain't got no business being here. <sighs> oh, my goodness. This kind of work is fiddly, but you can, if you cut a little X around an image, you can tuck it under 
and sew it. So it looks like the bunny is actually part of the fabric behind, but it's fiddly and takes a little bit of time. I might try to tuck a little bit more, but then I'm going to just switch to going about because I'm thinking about doing some little grassy stitches of some sort to uh, kind of hide this edge. Cut that up to his mouth. You just don't want to cut through the little bunny. Maybe I'll cut a little bit of that off so it's easier to tuck under. All this little fine work, it just, it's fiddly. You gotta be patient with yourself. Get in the zen. Called and checked on Scott's mom. I guess I better call and check on my folks. My mom had a doctor's appointment I think yesterday, and they were supposed to shoot us an email, but I hadn't seen one yet. So I don't know what the appointment was for. My stepfather's not real good about keeping us in the loop. And he doesn't understand why we worry. Quite frankly, we don't know when it's going to turn out and be something like a crisis again. So we'd rather be in the loop to know what's going on. He always says, well, there's nothing you could do about it. I was like, well, we might have suggestions or know some things that uh, you haven't heard about. So we all have a different life pers perspective, I guess. See, that gets him stitched down there. You can see my stitch lines. I'm not real, I'm not real concerned about that. I could just tuck all this grass under and just put some stitched on grass there. I just want a little bit of that to go in there. And you don't have to be this fiddly. I mean, you don't have to tuck it in. It's just what I like to do. So is anybody out stitching along or are you just sitting there getting bored watching me stitch? Along? And I'm not going to I'm not going to turn under this lower edge cuz I'm thinking I'm going to do some embroidery stitches over this bottom edge. So I'm just going to do a tacking running stitch down here again just to hold him in place and then I will do some embroidery on it. So I might not glue him into my book today cuz I might go and watch TV and do some embroidery work, but then I'll post pictures on my community tab when I put him into the book. Would that work for you guys? You can see what it looks like when I get finished. Um, and I love seeing the pages that you guys have been creating with our bits and bobs. Um, I know Mary does a pages and she does a little like sketchy page and then she turns around and does other page an, another page in the actual fabric and stuff Y'all ever watch that show, Hoarding? That gives me the most inspiration of all to clean. 
I, I watched that and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. And I get up and I get in this cleaning mood. And then Scott's like, where's my such and such? I put it back where it belongs. Where's that? In the toolbox. Okay. Where's my... Yeah. I was like, look, I hadn't touched anything on your desk. i just been cleaning everything else around, putting it back where it goes. Okay. You sure? <laughs> and if anybody sees tool using primate pop in the chat, that's my husband. So don't, don't bap him. <laughs> We've about come to the conclusion that we can do the bathroom on our own. For a lot less than 14 grand with us doing all the tear out and putting the in, um, doing the insulate, um, installation of the sheet rot and all the stuff that we already know how to do and we do all the time in the house. The only thing Scott really hates doing is the tile work because it's hard on him, uh, getting it set right and his knees and, and all. So. Y'all might see uh, videos on that popping up. I trimmed this too close. That's that's one of my main problems. Should have left a little bit more of the yellow. But you can see how he's looking. Where I've turned it under and where I haven't, you can tell. Boy, they're really opening up out there on the interstate. Planes, trains, and automobiles. We hear it all here. I'm right by I-77 and I-26. So, And the big Amazon warehouse is just up the road, so we hear everything. Um, Carol's wrapping lace today around her bobbin cards. Cool. Yeah, we did um we did a bathroom at our first house when we were first married and we did a, a bathroom over there. So we know how to do it um and all, but wow, I'm not looking forward to getting that old tile out of there. We gotta get that tub out because the problem is Scott went under the house and um he tried to fix a leak, they said, that we had. And he thinks what happened is he was having trouble with where the tub connects to the drain. And he thinks he might have broke something on the tub. Of course, this tub's been in here since 1960. So it, it's, it needs to be redone. We knew it was going to, but the fact that the tub could fall through the floor if anybody uses it is not a good thing. But he wants to get started on that this weekend. And if we do the labor, it'll cost us a whole lot less. Uh, we had bought tile for our laundry room, and then Scott got to thinking, oh, maybe tile's not such a good idea in a laundry room because it'll the washing machine will just jump all over the place. So I said, well, we still got that tile. We could put that on the floor and that'll save us a big chunk of change. The tile prices are, well, everything building related right now is just crazy. I've got a little bit of yellow showing right there, but it'll be all right. We'll make it work. I need to do the uh, frugal. Uh, I, I printed the patterns off I want to use, and I know exactly which fabric in my stash I want to use. I need to go dig that out. It's not frugal frocks this year. It's so frugal. 
you're supposed to use a free pattern and uh, fabric from your stash or repurpose something around your house like a sheet or um, bedspread or something like that. You don't want to contribute any more to the landfills with this project. So I said, I got stuff. So if you decide you want to get real close and tuck in, leave a little bit more than I did of the fabric around the edge of the bunny. Because I'm just not, I don't have a lot of space to turn it. And I think if I'd left a little bit more, probably a full quarter inch would have been better to tuck the edges in because I'm having a hard time getting them to stay to the back side of the bunny while I'm stitching. And we're just going to do plain white subway tile on the walls because um, I don't really want color up on the wall anyway. And I think they're 98 cents a square. I just do white towels and stuff in the bathroom anyway because I can throw them in bleach. That's something else. I need to finish my laundry too today. Got it started. I just hide my tails inside the felt. Let me show you what the bunny looks like. See how I tuck the top in? So you can't tell a separate piece. And what I can do, where the yellow is showing down here, I'll just um, do some embroidery with green and just maybe do some grass and have it come out a little bit farther away from the bottom of the bunny down here and that kind of thing. And then I was thinking if I cut these apart, And just quickly stitch them on at different heights. Maybe just use two orange ones and a pink one. And have three flowers on here. And then do their stems with some leaves. Oh, the dog's pooting. Bernadette, how awful can you be? You put, a, put one of these over here by the bunny and then I could do a stem and leaves here that kind of hide some of that yellow from the bunny oh she's about to kill me anyway and I want the yellow flower too and then I'll have three other flowers I can use on a different project Maybe use blue. Just make this look like a flower garden with the bunny on it. And I can embroider the stems and things. I might not use this here. Um, and then I could put one of these words. Um, I like this big create because it would fill up a lot of places here. So I could stitch that on and then do embroidery work to finish it out. Um, so that's one page. So I might leave that one at that at this and then um, I'll stitch. I might stitch those flowers on real quick. But I was thinking, let's try... Let's find one of these pieces of fabric. And I'm, I'm going to put these on here and then embroider the stems and leaves and things. So that'll give me something to do this afternoon while I'm watching videos or whatever I do. So there's that. That's what that page is going to look like. And I will put what it looks like um, finished on my community tab. You got, you're getting them now? Well, it's it's quiet out there right now. So the rumble went north of me. So it, it probably has reached you now. 
So let's pull the, the other can that Canta page that's just waiting to be installed and have a little bit added to it and see what we've got in this pocket that I could add to this and go ahead and finish it. But this one I will finish off screen, but we'll post a picture on my community tab. Now I've got this page that I did all that stitching on already that we need to add some things to it. So let's see, what do we have that has some of the same colors in it? I'm thinking. Think, think, think. Sometimes thinking is a dangerous thing. I'm not going to use any more of that. I really want to use some of this rusted fabric on here. Maybe just a strip of it. I don't know what this will do if I try to tear it. So I guess we'll find out. Ooh, it tears really nice. That's a nice sound. Ooh, I wonder. There's actually a little piece of ribbon in there and there. I really love this that Janet made. I'm thinking. Kitty cats are cute. I have to just play and see what I can come up with here. That covers up my lace there. I do want to try that experiment with the Oh, thank you.
Let me get a couple more pins to kind of pin this stuff in place so when I pick it up, I don't send them flying. I really like this green button too. Maybe we could put the green button on there. I could pull my little iron out and iron those smoother, but I don't think I'm going to worry about that too much. Now, if you wanted to, you could use like um, little safety pins to hold things onto your page. You don't have to stitch them on. You could just, I have some uh, small safety pins. I could safety pin some of this stuff in place. And I'll hold everything in place and I'll sit here and stitch a little bit longer. Barbara says she'll be back. I'll be here a while. I'm just going to stitch. I'm wondering if there's a little bit of metal or something still granules stitching on to this piece that is rusted because, boy, this needle doesn't like going through all these layers. It might be that I just have too many layers going on for hand stitching, but... Just do the best I can. It'll be nice to have a couple pages done in this journal. I, I'd love to get this journal done. You know, all the pages have something on them by the end of the year. I don't know if I've got all of my pages too glued together or not. want to be careful about pushing too hard or I might end up with a needle in my finger. I'm just doing the run and stitch again. It seems to be all I want to do today. I did want to try to get wonder which of the I wonder if I took a piece of this rusted fabric and put the kitty cat that Mary sent me on there with the Mod Podge. Like, there's eight total kitties. If I just do one onto this rusted fabric, just apply him on there. We'll see what that looks like. Let me finish stitching this on, and then we'll do that real quick. Just as an example, um, I got that fabric Mod Podge from Peg Robinson, I think, um, when she and the gang were down at Myrtle Beach, and uh, I guessed where they were. All right, I don't need this pen anymore, so I'll put it back in the porcupine pin cushion. So glad the dog's going to the groomer on Monday. P.U. Don't know why it irritates me so, but listening to her lick on herself, on her paws, drives me bonkers. 
Not real sure why. Now I could look through my metal um, pieces and attach a piece of metal too. I have a bunch of metal charms and things. I feel like I'm pulling this off the table where you guys can't see. Keep bringing you closer and closer and closer. But I'm having a hard time getting through all the layers I have on here. Because in some areas there's lace and then there's two layers of fabric and all the stitching. I'm going to take this to the back. Maybe. The stitching is really dense. You can see from the back. If you look and you've got stitches that have separated and one is loose, if you just lift the stitch in front of it and just work along up to where you are, you can get it so they're all laying flat like that. I can't even get it to go down through these. Ann was saying that when she was doing the patch, it really wore her out. This piece is really wearing me out. It doesn't have any paint on it. It's just so many layers of things to try to get through. Uh -oh. Hi, Sharon. Tomorrow is Thursday. So that's our day. We usually get together over in uh, Ann Lars' uh, group on uh, Facebook. Ann, are you doing it tomorrow? If you're not able to, I can open a room in your in your group if anybody wants to get together tomorrow. Or I can open a room in my room in my group if you're not available. I know you're going to visit your your son. And every time I hear you say Utah, I think of my son when he was little. He he called U-Hauls Utahs. Mama, there goes a Utah. It's like, no, that's a U-Haul. No, it's a Utah. <laughs> All right, now I'm not having any problem. I'm not going through the fabric that's been um, in with the metal pieces. So I think that when you rust fabric, it must leave some metal or something behind that makes it hard to sew through because now where I'm just fabrics, it's not a problem. In fact, I could probably do it in and out like that. Yep, and right back to it's hard to get through where I've got the the orange uh, piece of stuff. That's interesting. 
Very, very interesting. Yeah. So does anybody have any experience with that? With the um, fabrics like have, that have been rusted? Having trouble getting a needle through? Because that's the only time I have all this trouble. Anne said yes. All right. So we'll see you tomorrow in Anne's. That'll be fun. Scott said he missed not being able to pop in during our crafting chat when he was on first shift. Before you know it, next month will come and he'll be back on first shift. I told him, I said, I'm getting too old for this switching schedules. It wears me out. And I'm not even the one working it. I just get up and make sure food's prepped and meals are, are ready to go so he can go and do his job. I don't know. It's just what we have to do right now. Ow, I got myself. Boy, that's hard to get through. So, yes, rusting fabric is cool. But I think it's only cool if you're going to glue it down, not try to sew through it because whatever in that process makes it, it's like you're trying to push your needle through, I don't know, steel. It's very, very strange. I'm beginning to want to just pull out my stapler and staple this stuff. Bam, it's done. This is hard to get through. Oh, my hands are going to be so sore. I'll be glad to go back to sewing those little flowers on because... Even with the glue on the back of them, they shouldn't be this difficult. And I'm going to leave the, uh-oh. I'm going to leave the tails hanging below the page. Use the table, I guess, to push it through instead of trying to do it with my fingers. That's what I'll do, just shove it into the table. Wow, that's an experience. All in its own right. My sister gave me a, my sister Robin gave me a new sketchbook and I started sketching some things in it last night. Just some odd looking cats. I can't do literal drawing. It'll have to be funky, odd looking things. I will be glad to be out of this, have it all stuck down. Scott said, would you like to go up to Traveler's Rest and go thrifting? And I'm like, oh, yeah. He said, gas would be pricey. I was like, well, there's that. <laughs> I miss Traveler's Rest. Going up there to go thrifting was a lot of fun. Oh my goodness, I can't get through that. Wow. And the only thing that's different is it's that fabric that's been rusted. Woo wee!
Uh oh. Yeah, Pam's in Utah. Anne's coming out to see her son who lives out that way. Uh, the farthest west I have ever been, I think, is Nashville. I've been to Nashville. I had to go out there for training in my short stint at Cracker Barrel as a retail manager. They send you all out there and you have to go through the training there at headquarters in Nashville. They were going on and on that we might have country stars coming in. I didn't see nobody. <laughs> yeah, I did. Teresa, I just never thought about the residue that the rusting would leave in the fabric would make it this difficult to sew through. And then it makes me worry what that would do to my sewing machine, you know, for it to be that difficult. I need to still sew down this side and then sew my little word on here. Now I'm beginning to think I don't want the word on that brown because I don't want to have to sew it through. I might sew it off to the side here. I'm going to tie this off back here. I do have a lot of stitching in this page too, so... Next month, we're going to take a break from um, doing our Bits and Bobs journals. And I'd like to do another one of the little journals using recycled, um, you know, cardboard or packaging like we did last summer. I'd like to do another journal like that. And I might look for some different techniques and um, teach myself them real quickly and then show you guys how to do them. If that's something, you know, you'd be interested in. I just really, I'll show that journal again. I'll take, I'll let my hands have a break. And I'll show the journal we did last summer. And see who all might be interested in doing something like it again. And I'll look up some interesting, um, let me move y'all back shoving y'all around and I'll stitch that on there but this is the li little summertime journal we did and I used the um, dividers from the cat food oh staple the word to it oh, I really do want it hey let's do that real quick I don't have the fancy schmancy stapler I just have this one Let's see if it'll do. Teresa said, staple that bad boy down. I was like, I will. That'll beat me beating myself up with that. That page is done. So I might put the button on. I don't know. I might stitch something metal to it. Yeah, I might do, I need to still stitch up this side, but it won't be bad. There's a little bit of stitching left there. This is what I'm thinking about doing next month, which is April. So maybe we'll do a page a week and for a couple months and do another little journal like this using recycled packaging. So like um, your um, dividers from your cat food, your cereal boxes, any of that kind of stuff you, you save and to reuse. So we, we, we'll do another one of these. 2021 summertime thing. So I think this would be a lot of fun. And then we did the um, that binding. I oh, can't remember what it's called. But the one Tanya taught us. 
But this was what we did last summer. We did this in June last year. In June and July. We were doing it per month, weren't we? Like one a month. I think. Because this is June 30th and then July. But this was a really fun little journal. And we did a little watercolor. I remember that. We did a little watercolor each week. That was fun. And I did, when we first started off, we didn't add color to the pages. But then when we started doing color on the pages, it just made everything pop. Um, so I want to do this again. I'll have to think of some things that we could do little watercolors. This was a watercolor. This is a mini uh, picture from my drop paper where I'd been doodling. When I get on the phone with my mom, I keep a piece of paper or sit by my drop paper and doodle. And she was a huge blue lady. And I scanned her and then I shrunk her down so she could be put in journals. And we did little film strips. I did that with my um, GIMP uh, app on my computer. And then we did a summertime image. This is actually from a picture of me when I was little and I would fill the wash tub up. It was an old metal wash tub my grandma had and I put water in it and that was my swimming pool. And then I found this image of these children in one. So I just put that all on there. I loved doing the mini um, one inch by one inch, I think, pictures that we did. Of summertime images. So we've got the sunshine, sand in a bucket, lemonade, a beach umbrella, an ice cream cone, and a watermelon. Those were all done by me, drawing and painting. So we'll have to do some more of those. And so what kind of theme could we do? Because it's really not summertime, so we don't really want to do another summertime thing. Um, this was two images from a magazine that I put together and had this little boy on there. And then I just put the fish and his fishing line out to it. So think about a theme. This has got a message inside that pocket. But it's pushed down so far I can't get it out. And the doodles on the little squares. They were a lot of fun. And then this was one of Janet Nash's butterfly fairies that she showed. They were a lot of fun to do too. And that's just what we did. And, it, you know, there's the watercolor for this day. And then I guess we used her butterfly fairy for our watercolor that day. But you can see it was only a few pages, but it turned out to be such a cute little journal. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You want to do another eight page? That'll tell you how many pages to gather up. We'll do eight pages again, and we'll start this um, in April, which is only a couple weeks away. Yep, the blue lady. Mary says, sure. So gather up something recycled cardboard, and we'll do a little journal. I'll see what all I can come up with by April. I don't know what the first Wednesday in April is. Um, I don't really have a calendar that I can look at, but we'll switch. But we need a theme. You guys want tell me a theme for that we could do starting in April. If we do a page a week, it'll get us through what April, April and May. So this one's stitched on there. I want to try this here with the um, oh it's not it's not mod podge it's americana deco page fabric so let's just And when he's dry, I'll just put him back in my envelope five and we'll use them. I don't think I'm going to use anything else from pocket five this week. Um, 
If you guys are interested, once we get done, April 6th is the first Wednesday. So April 6th is when I need to have my squirrels out of the rave, I guess you could say. Um, April 6th, we'll start doing a new um, recycled journal. We'll call it a recycled journal. Just that the pages will be from recycled stuff. So that's a note to myself. But after we do the postcards, if you guys want to do something like this, where you just gather together some little bits and then just run some stitches along the top to hold it all together, we could do a swap like that. We could do a swap for words on bits of canvas, you know, that you can just stamp out with your letter sets. I'm just coming up with swap ideas. Um, for anybody that likes to do swaps, I'm really quite tempted to take her and just match her up with a pretty blue fabric and turn her into an actual doll, um, a puffy doll. I'm just stacking this up so it's easier to put back in the envelope or the pocket rather. Can't find that green button I wanted to use. Did y'all see the green button? Did I lose it? Maybe it'll pop up here. And see, I still have a lot left that I could do. You know, I could make a card, a quick card would be easy to do. But we'll save all of that for another time. And I love this idea that Janet does where you stitch some things on a piece of ribbon of some sort. That would be a fun swap too. It's like an instant fabric journal <coughs> decoration. <coughs> Sorry. Bernie, where'd you go? There's the green button that I wanted to use. That I will sew on somewhere here. <coughs> Maybe I won't. Sorry, something's catching my throat. I do want to do that. And we'll put these kitty cats back in. We can use them another day. Woo. All right. This is the Bits and Bobs journal. I just need to put this back, all this stuff back in pocket five. And always keep your bits and bobs journal in your mind because you can always add all these little bits. Like, see, that almost got left behind. This is what we're going to put the kitty on. And then, see, I've got these sitting here. And um, the reason they're sitting here is I wanted to talk about them real quick. This is just a salvage off one of the fabrics in the... Um, mystery quilt that I'm doing. This was salvaged from one of the fabrics and I am saved it aside here because I'm going to stamp words on it and then don't drop it into my pocket five. Not necessarily today, but they're there to remind me to do that. Let me look and see what my dog's doing real quick. Okay, she's just sleeping by the couch. All right, let me get a piece of wax paper, which I know I have right here. Just to protect the surface. So I've got napkin and a piece of the rusted fabric. And I'm going to use this decoupage for fabric by Americana. I've never used this stuff. Hi, Kathy Whitney, you're back. 
Oh, I'm so glad that storm moved on. That was kind of freaking me out. I need to run an errand. It's gotten kind of thick in the jar. Ooh. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I'm just kind of winging it. I didn't read the instructions. My bad. And we'll just stick the kitty down. Maybe. This has gotten really thick in the in the bottle. We'll see what this looks like. I know this stuff is meant to be used with fabric. I guess fabric to fabric or fabric to something else. But I'm using a napkin and fabric. It'll stop here in a minute. It's probably a, your car's warranty or, you know, one of those. So we'll let that dry a minute, and I'm going to tack these flowers on while it dries, just so you guys can see what it does. Bernie, it's okay. You don't have to be freaking out. Come here. See, it stopped. It stopped. It's okay. It's okay. So I finished the page that I had started much earlier, like last year or so. I just added a little bit to it. And I got to stitch up this side. So we're going to do that real quick. And then I want to tack the flowers on the first block that we did together today here. And once I do all the embroidery work on this, all the, the hand stitching, I'm going to do stems and leaves on each of the flowers. And then I'll put some different grass along the bottom, up or over the bunny a little bit, and around the, the stems and leaves. I figured I'd do the grass last. Hi, Brenda. I didn't see you come in. Welcome. Oh, you want to do a puppy doll swap. Wow. I was thinking of doing a weekly or a monthly doll challenge where we each make a doll and then just share it. Um, and it wouldn't have to be a huge doll. You could do, it would be a doll of any size. We could say, um, maybe we could do a theme each month. Like maybe this month, if we wanted to do one before the end of the month, we could do like a leprechaun or um, an Irish dancer or, you know, Lady of Green. We could make it whatever. I think that could be fun to do. I'm going to finish the, the kitty cat one because it'll only take me a second to stitch down this side. And, um, oh, I, I left this out. I need to put that in my book, in my Bits and Bob's book. Oh, now the cats want to come in and eat. The dog needs to go out. I'm going to finish stitching this, is what I was going to say, down that one side. And then I'll just show you how I put them in my journal. Because I just use fabric tack. I just glue them in with fabric tack. And then I set it somewhere open to dry so that the pages don't, in any way get glued together but and it's open so the glue has air to it to dry and the rusted fabric is fun but boy that was hard to sew through it really was <laughs> all right so i'm going to bring you guys back over here real quick my crazy tie-dye shirt my son made that's got um, paint all over it. 
This was my house painting shirt. Okay, I'm just going to do a running stitch. It should not be hard with me being away from the rusted fabric. Who's digging on my chair? Callie, Callie, I know you want your food, honey. Give me a minute. Bernadette can't even go out and stay in her doghouse any right now because the fence is open on one side. So you're going to have to be patient, cat. Uh-oh. I could add more to this. But I think I'm going to leave it just as it is. It says dream. Now I don't have any, I don't think I have any date stamps. Well, I could stamp the date on one of those um, pieces that I showed you that I have left over from my quilt along with Pat Sloan, which is actually a mystery quilt. I haven't done last week's yet, so that's what I was going to work on this afternoon was last week's. Because this week's um, mystery well, the thing about it is, is the fence was installed and the kid next door found problems with it. And so he told them he wanted a refund and for them to come and remove the fence. So they came and removed the front fence. And he said he doesn't know how long it'll take. Well, if the fencing company puts the word out on him, nobody's going to want to put a fence back for him. He might have, you know, he, he might have shot himself in the foot. I forgot what I was going to do. Date. I do have my date. Today is... Uh, I need something to stamp just to see. March 9th, but today is the 16th. So we need to change this. Oh, it's not March 96. Um, 66. March 16th, 2022. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but we'll see. Oh, look at that. It did it good. March 16th, 2022. Cole, I'm coming. Quit fussing. I'm telling you, these cats, they just know. And what I can do, let's see. This one is going to be going on. You got to look. If you're going to do a tab, you got to make sure you know which side. So this actually needs to go on this side of the page. And I'm going to stitch it so that just the date sticks out from the edge here. You're not going to starve to death. I'll be there in just a little minute. I'll just do a running stitch. Kind of tack him on here. I could do that stitch where you do just a tiny stitch on top and a long one in the bottom, like Carol did, just to kind of hold this on here. Oh, I could make another one for the other page, too, because I'm finishing them both today, right? 
I think that's neat to have the dates on the tabs like that. But I'm not going to put the date on the other one just yet until I um, until I do all that embroidery. But I could stamp it on that little piece and have it ready to go. I mainly want to show you how I put it in the book. I'm coming. Just a minute. Let's go ahead and put the date on there. There we go. And I'll put that on the other page. Okay. All right. I'll show um, the finished pages on my um, community tab. Oh, that kitty cat on that rusted fabric is looking cool. So here's my book. I'm going to open it to the page this is going to go on, which is this one here. I've got to find these tags so I can put a tag on it um, uh, because this is a page I made. I have glue, three pages glued together because I think I missed one when I was going through gluing them. So there's actually three pages glued in there. Move you back so you don't have such a shadow. All right. So now this I will glue in here. And what I do is I just get my fabric tack and I put a bunch of glue on the back of this. E6000 will work too if you don't have fabric tack. Hi, Eva. You got your grandkids. Well, their time with them is precious. So well, thank you for stopping in, but I understand. We've got to get the stuff. The um this was made by Lisa Conway, and it's just some old sheets that she tore into a rough shape and then she sewed them together with um just some narrow au fray ribbon it looks like and she's gifted that to me one time and i've got pages that other people have made me and um my pages as i'm getting toward the back of the book aren't perfectly square so Instead of making six by six pages now, I have to make five and three quarter by six. So they can be six inches tall, but they can only be five and three quarter inches wide to fit in the book. Usually once you get this stuff started, you can't get it to stop, but it's getting thick and old, so... And so fabric tack is fabric glue. It's meant to glue things to fabric. But the E6000 works too, if that's what you have. So I'll put a bunch of glue on there. The other page is going to take me a minute because I'm going to be embroidering stems on the flowers and that kind of thing. And then I just kind of center it on the page and plop it down and then push it into the page fabric. And then I just leave it open somewhere like over on the top of Greg's compute, um, printer over there. And it will glue on here. And you can always, if, if an edge doesn't glue down, you can add a little bit more glue later. And that's all there is to sticking it in. And then this page will go in here. And you see, I'm right up to the edge of that. And then I'll put this tab maybe down at the bottom. 
you won't see this when I stitch it on there. So that's what we did today. And we've also got our kitty cat apl napkin applied to fabric here. We'll get rid of this. And I think he turned out cute. He's still sticky. So he'll have to go somewhere and dry. So we got two pages done simply because I had this. Um, this page was mostly done to begin with here. And then this one, I'm just going to do the embroidery work and stuff on it. So, oh, next week. What pocket will we do next week? Yeah, mine are very demanding right now because I think the dog needs to go out. And um, the cats want their food. So I got to put the cat food down. Put the dog's collar and leash on. Take her out. Then when we come back in, she'll have to go in her crate while all five cats decide when they want to eat for about an hour. And then I'll let Bernadette back out. But she takes old lady naps in the afternoon anyway, so she she's okay with it. Um, oh, and Cole is really driving me mad. Can you hear him? Wow. I'm starving out here. Random. What is that? Maximum number is not 10. It's 20. Generate. So it's given us number four. Four is next week, which will be back on paper. So next week we'll do four. And then I, let me look at this calendar. Oh, my goodness. I'm coming. Christina, I'm sorry. All right, so we've got next week and the week after. So we get two more weeks and bits and bobs. And then on the 6th, we'll start a new summer journal. Okay? I don't. I take them too, Barbara. <laughs> Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. I have to make sure my mother-in-law and my mother kind of take one. But mom's back up at her house now. So hopefully she's getting enough rest and enough to eat. I can't worry about it. I'm too far away. But still crosses my mind. Yeah, I'm taking my time. You know, he's, he's going to die before I get done. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. I, and we'll start the Recycle Journal Project April 6th. And we have two more weeks doing our bits and bobs. Next week is number four. One, one pocket back from today. And this is looking really cool. Once he's dry, he'll go back in pocket five. So we can use him next time five is drawn. Bye, guys. The animals are demanding me to stop. Bye, Gail. I'm coming.